Oh, our form has been nothing less than perfect so far this season. And in today's episode, we're going to put that perfect start to the test with a game against Manchester United. Plus, I've got a new signing to introduce you to. Welcome to episode five of Bottoms Up with Arsenal. <music> Right, let's get into it and let's have a look at how our season has been going. And as you can see from all this, this sea of green, it has been amazing. In the first episode, we had a 2-1 win against West Ham and a 6-1 win against Nottingham Forest. After that, we played Norwich, picked up a 3-0 win in that game. Kai Havertz for a penalty, Nick Jonas Schmetz and William Saliba getting on the score sheet in that game. Then we played Sunderland in the Carabao Cup away from home. We had a 2-1 win in that with Nwanieri and Raphael getting the goals and if we just click on that game as you can see from the team down here we basically went full rotation we have Fiorotta in goal Durin on the right back Parisi left back Kayunda and Diamande in defence Calderon and Gonzalez in midfield Rafael and Zango Bruce and Wanieri made up the rest of our team Emery Havertz Pataka and Van Persie came on in the second half as substitutes it was, it's so nice being able to do that full rotation in an away game against Sunderland and not have to worry about whether we'd be good enough. I mean, Sunderland are in the championships so and it's not like it's a premiership team and it, we did scrape the win. But it's just so nice to be able to do that. Against Chelsea, we won 2-0 with goals from Nwanieri and Saka. Then we played AS Roma, a 5-0 win in our opening Champions League game. Three goals from Bakayo Saka, one from Zay Emery and one from Nwanieri. Then we beat Wolves 4-0. Nwanieri with a couple, Saka and Durin with the goals in that game. Then we played Villarreal in our second Champions League game. Nwanieri with a hat-trick, Saka, Mahara and Van Persie on the score sheet there. And then we played Everton away from home, winning 3-0. Kai Havertz with two and Nwanieri with one as well. And it's all been looking really rather lovely. Now, I did say that we've got a new signing to show off. I say show off. It's, it's Thiago Silva, £40 million up front, rising to £59 million in instalments and add-ons and whatever else. We needed someone in the centre of the park and now we've got someone. So now, as well as having um, Zaya Emery and Giardini, we now have Thiago Silva that can play the ball-winning midfielder role. The other two can alternate between the ball-winning midfielder and a deep-line playmaker. So it, it just gives us a little bit of a rotation option in the middle of the park. Really pleased with that, really happy with it. And yeah, that basically finished our spending for the summer. We've still got £37 million in the bank with another 110000 oh, sorry, £1.1 £1 million in the wage budget spend. Our overall balance still continues to plummet. I have no idea why our overall balance is plummeting like this. But by the end of the season, I'm a bit worried we might end up in administration or something, the way it's going down like that. But like I say, in terms of matches, results and whatever else, it's been really rather good. After Man United today, we've got a game against Michelin in the Champions League. If we have a look at the Champions League table, we are third in that at the moment. We've played two, one, two. The teams above us have all played three games. They obviously played um, previously. And, yeah, it's we, we've got off to a, a really good, lovely start. And if we look at the Premier League table, no surprises, we're top of that. But to be fair, Newcastle, six wins from six games as well. They are absolutely keeping pace with us, Newcastle. And Manchester City, only a couple of points behind with Tottenham in fourth. Manchester United, surprisingly, are actually in seventh position at the moment. Only 11 points on the board. And if we look at their, they, the game they lost, surprisingly, was 5-2 away from home against Norwich. And then they've drawn at home to Chelsea and away to West Ham. West Ham, who, um, in my other save, my bottoms-up save, have become a very dominant team in English football. They're clearly not that here. As you can see, they're currently 15th in the table here. Man City have been dominating the league, unsurprisingly. But let's get into today's game and it's against like I say it's against Manchester United we are at home so that is in our favour I'm trying very hard as well not to get arrogant not to get cocky not to get carried away with myself 
but we have been playing some amazing football. Rest as in goal, Calvo left back, Pataka right back, Escalada and Saliba in the middle, Zaya Emery and Silva in the midfield, Van Persie and Saka out wide with Mahara in behind Nwanyeri. We have got a couple of injury issues. Cal Duin is out for a day. He's back tomorrow, basically. He's, he's only been out for a few days, not long. Nick Jonas Smets has been out for a little bit longer. He's back in training in seven days' time. He's in his rehabilitation stage at the moment. That's the reason as well why, why Nwanyeri has been playing up top. And to be fair to Nwanyeri, in terms of the league, six appearances, four goals. He's doing the job for me. Four goals in two games in Europe as well. Schmetz is going to have a fight in his hands to get his place back in the Arsenal team. When it comes to a new signing, Thiago Silva, I am still I'm in an iron about whether I prefer him or Giardini. I kind of alternate between the two. Um, for this game, we're going to go with Thiago Silva and just see how he gets on. So let's get into today's game. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. All that sort of stuff. Really do love it when you do that. And let me know in the, in the comments what you think of this Arsenal team so far. I mean, I'm loving it. I really am. It, I almost forgot that we had, we were coming back. For, oh, hang on. We need to try and amend this now. I don't know why this changes like this. Right. I think that's why. Yeah, let me know what, what you think of this Arsenal team in the comments. I've I've been so, so much enjoying this. I, I, I almost forgot that we were going to come back for the Man United game because I was just enjoying playing the save. It's it's just been amazing. And as I say it, on cue, Manchester United take a lead. That's not planned. There's a well-worked goal, to be fair, from a set piece, which is always disappointing when you concede for set pieces, especially as that was their first effort on goal. And it was on target, and it was an actual goal as well. Half an hour gone. I think I'm going to give a little shout to the boys because oh no didn't want to do that one let's come out of there where's my shouts there they are demand more never usually has any effect whatsoever if you're newish to fm and you're wondering about whether you should use them shouts i rarely use them they don't seem to have any effect at all for me as you can see i've demanded more and we've had not even a highlight since then we've not had a highlight in the whole of that half that's been terrible I'm going to thrash my arms. What was that? Start playing football. It was absolutely terrible that first half. And it just happens to be that way that you come back, do an episode on camera. And I mean, we're absolutely, we're not creating anything. Right. We're going to need to do something because we are being so poor. He's getting very frustrated don't, I, I don't really want to take him off. not really got anyone to bring on for him. If we bring Kai Havertz on for... For Kenta Mahara, I think. Um, Nwanyere is not having a good game. So I think we take him off and bring Sangu on. And hopefully it can kind of spark something from him. Calvo's having a really poor game as well. I'm going to take him off very soon if we don't turn something around him. This is only the second highlight of the game and it, it starts with United. Right, we've won the ball back. Havertz has got it. Gives it to Saka. Come on, boys. We need to keep this winning run going. Pataka gets a cross into the box. And it's a goal from Van Persie. He's full for the season. Pataka is always a danger on that right-hand side with his crossing. He's so accurate with them crosses. We've seen so many assists already. Right, Calvo is definitely going to come off now. And we bring on Parisi in his place. And I think Zaya Emery is probably going to have to come off because he's looking rather knackered. Um, does say he seems unaffected by the knocks. And maybe we bring on Giardini for Thiago Silva instead. And let's see if um, if that can continue our boost. Right, Pataka with the throw into Havertz gives it to Zay Emery to Giardini to Escalada. We're building the play up from the back, nice and patient. Have no problem with that. We have been playing some absolutely stunning football. We've not really seen it in this game because there's been hardly any highlights. 
but here's Parisi on the left hand side. Gives it to Van Persie. He's found Sangano. Oh, would Nwanieri have scored that? I mean, other than that one shot on target, Manchester United have not really shown anything else. Saka takes the corner, comes out to Sangar, Sang, Sangu, I should say, it's still with Sangu. Here's Parisi. Yes, first goal of the season. Sorry if you're headphone users or anything like that. Parisi with the goal. It's 2-1 to Arsenal. We've got another substitution to make. Looking at the boys, he's not frustrated anymore, so I'm quite happy to leave him be. I think we'd probably take off Zaire Emery for Raphael. Does it make any difference if we swap them around? Not really, to be fair. We'll just leave it like that. And basically, we're in Sith. Oh, would you believe it? The second I make the, the substitution, we've now got Parisi injured. Oh, that is so frustrating when that happens. Right, let's have a look at our tactics. So Saka, can he play over here? Went to one star. Can he play if you move him up here? Oh, he's actually very decent there. So I think we'd put him there. Move Havertz out to the right. Go on to a balanced mentality. because we, we just need to see this out now. We've got the lead. Let's confirm our changes. We can't make any more substitutions. Hopefully Saka doesn't get injured as well. But I really hate it when it happens when they get an injury as soon as you make your last substitution. And there you go. It was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. But we've picked up the win. It's 2-1 against Manchester United. Van Persie and Parisi coming through for us. Now we've just got to see how long Parisi is actually going to be out injured for. Zaya Emery is injured. So Zaya Emery is out for 9 to 12 days. And Parisi is out for three weeks. That's not good news. That's really not. Right, OK. I'll see you back here for the game against FC Micheland in the Champions League. <laughs> Right, so before we go any further, I just want to bring you up to date on an email we had come through. I'm going to put it on screen round about now, where we get told we're potentially going to be having a tycoon takeover, looking to invest all this money into the club. I got so excited. As you can tell by the fact there's nothing up here, means that them rumours are now gone. Uh, because when you get rumours of a tycoon takeover or any kind of takeover, it'll come up here that you're... Uh, five-year plan has been altered um, due to the current take. I might even say that there's a transfer embargo in place, things like that. Um, whereas if we go back to the... Oh, there you go. I'm typing it. I've already got it there. Arsenal chairperson rubbishes consortium takeover talk. Arsenal chairman Aidan Campbell has sensationally quashed reports of a potential takeover by at least one consortium. Some groups have been connected with a potential deal by ITV Sport. But in light of recent developments, the landscape is now somewhat less clear and supporters will be watching closely as the situation continues to unfold. So there's going to be no take takeover. We, that's just not going to happen. Always take it with a pinch of salt if it says there is going to be a takeover because I very rarely get a takeover. A tycoon takeover is probably about as common for me as what a good youth intake is. Unlike a lot of other people you see on YouTube that seem to have amazing youth intakes every single year. I haven't had one in the whole of FM24. Um, we're even at a club like Arsenal now, so it'll be interested to see what we get this year. Right, in terms of the table, we are top 7 from 7. Newcastle won again as well. They're still 7 from 7. In terms of who Newcastle played, Norwich, Nottingham Forest, West Ham, Leeds, Ipswich, Fulham, Brentford. They've definitely had a kind start to the season. They must be getting some tough games coming up. You look at ours, at least we've had the likes of Man United, Chelsea in there that are games that when you look at a 2-1 win against Man United, a 2-0 win against Chelsea, they were close-ish games. If we look at the Champions League, however, and by the way, Bakayo Saka and Kenta Mahara, the two best-rated players in this competition, they've been sensational. We play Mitterland now, who are down here in 26th place. They've played two. They, they won a game against Astana, who I'd imagine going to be around the bottom, second from bottom. And then the next game they played was against Monaco, who they lost to. So other teams have all played now. We're in 
the group of teams that play um, second this week on the Wednesday. Worth noting as well, Crystal Palace, they've played four games. I, I don't really know how some teams have played four, but yeah, Crystal Palace are one of the teams that's managed to have played four games. And they've beaten Derry City, which you'd imagine they would do. They drew with Valencia at home and they've lost to Paris Saint-Germain and Benfica. As things stand at the moment, they're, they're in the blue playoff thing, so not going too badly for them in that respect. Kent Mahal has also got five assists in the Champions League. He's probably been better in the Champions League than he has in the Premier League. But yeah, we're currently saying a win here could take us around the top spot of the league. And yeah, against Midtjylland, you would probably expect us to get a win. I've not actually picked the team for this game. So let's get and do that right now. Um, Cal Durin is now fit, thankfully, so he can actually start. Christopher Calder, we are a bit short. We've only got really Raphael and... Gustavo Gonzalez that pick up the midfield positions. So, yeah, pretty much an unchanged team from last time. Restes in goal, Calvo Pataka in the wing-back positions, Escalado and Saliba in defence, Giardini and Silva in the midfield. First time they've partnered each other, I believe, as well. Van Persie and Saka out wide with Mahara in behind Nwanyeri. That was a strange way to say his name. Ethan Nwanyeri, there you go. That's one name I can say. There's many I can't, but that's one name I can say. Right, let's get into the game. We're away from home. We're against Mitchelland. And this will put us a long way towards Champions League qualification if we can pick up the win here. And like I said earlier, we would expect to win this. Right, here's Silva to Pataka. An early highlight in the fourth minute. Pataka brings it back to Silva. He loses the ball on the edge of their area. But Saliba wins it back, gives it to Escalada. Giardini back to Escalada again. Silva playing it around in front of. I mean, they've got literally everybody behind the ball at this point. They oh, they intercepted it, but they gave it straight back to us when they did. We don't seem to be in much of a hurry to go anywhere. Here's Pataka. Gets his cross towards Van Persie. Oh, I was. I've seen that so many times, Pataka crossing into the box and Van Persie heading in. I was definite that was going in. Midtland, the only team to have had a shot on target at the moment. They've had two to end zero. We've now had a shot on target. This has not been the free-flowing episode so far that I was hoping it was going to be. Right, here's the next highlight. Saliba picks up the ball around her penalty area, gives it to Pataka. I mean, if you're the opposition, you've absolutely got to stop Taka getting crosses into the box. Here's Mahara. He's in the box. He gets a cross in or plays it across. Oh, and the referee's going to disallow it, isn't he? If he doesn't, it's 1-0 to us. But this referee looks a bit like a killjoy. Oh, I'll take it back. He's not. He loves having fun. It's 1-0. Nwanyeri with the goal. Mahara with the assist. It's quite strange about having Kenta Mahara, who... Here is not like the standout player. Oh, what what happened there? I mean, I thought that was going to be a stroke of genius for Mahara then. Here's Saka with the corner. Puts the ball in towards the far post. And I think the referee's just given a penalty. Right, who's on penalties for? It's got, I always get worried that these are going to change. Usually Saka, yeah, it is Saka. Havertz would be there if he was on the field. But Saka is... The one, so we'll, I was tempted to change it to Kenta Mahara, but I won't fiddle with it. I'll leave it be. And it is a penalty that's been given. So Saka steps up to take the penalty to make it 2-0 on the night. Never in any doubt. Never doubt our golden boy. Ninth goal of the season. The legendary Bakayo Saka at this point in the save. Right, here's the next highlight, and it's with Michelin. They're always a team that's worth having a scout of every now and then as well for their young players, because you can pick up some pretty decent players there. Mahara puts the ball in, and that's Shaquille Van Persie with the goal, and Kenta Mahara is a creative genius in the Champions League. He really is. It's not actually gone down as an assist for him, which is a real shame, but he's on a 9.3 average rating. The game knows that he's been absolutely influential in this game so far. And he does seem to love the Champions League. Mahara. 
Right, here's the next highlights. We have Mitchell Ann from a free kick. Van Persie collects the ball and brings it away for us. He's getting double teamed at the moment. No, nope, now he's down to just one. Gets a cross over into the box. Oh, and Saka actually getting on the end of that with a header. Here's Pataka with the throw. Mahara gives it to Giardini, to Saka. They clear their lines, but we win the header. We come back again. It's now with Van Persie. He's going to try and get a cross in, is he? No, pulls it back to Giardini. Thiago Silva. I thought he was going to take a shot. Pataka! Oh! Pataka doesn't score many goals. He assists quite a few. He doesn't score many goals. But that was close to being a goal. Mahara takes the corner. And the keeper comes out and actually collects it this time without conceding the penalty. Or without someone conceding the penalty, at least. Calvo brings it down. Takes it under his control. It's now of Escalada. He gives it to Saliba. This is the kind of football we've been playing so far. It just looks so good. It's just so beautiful to watch. Look at Mahara getting past his man, getting the ball in the box. Comes back out to Calvo. And we're just all over Michelin. I know they're not the greatest of European teams. But when you're away from home, Nuanieri is through. And Ethan Nuanieri is 13th goal of the season. It's just glorious. This is what I've been watching since the last episode. And it's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous, gorgeous football. And I am loving it. Right, we have the ball again. It's with Saka. Run out of play. It looks like it's... Oh, it's a penalty. Right, at this point... How many goals has Saka got? He's only got one, okay. So, nuanieri has got two goals. So... Presumably, Nuanieri is going to be the one that takes this penalty. But if he's not, I want it to be Kenta Mahara. But because Nuanieri is on a hat-trick, he's probably going to be given the ball for this. And I can't really argue with that. But I would just like to see Kenta get a goal. The penalty has been given. It is Mahara that's going to take it. He'll probably miss now that I've given him the job of taking the penalty. No, he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. Kenta never misses. Fifth goal of the season. I mean, he does miss sometimes, but we'll pretend he doesn't. He's on a 10 rating for the game, and we're only at the hour mark. Right, we, I think, actually, we're going to take Pataka off because the job's done. We're 5-0 up. Calvo can probably come off as well. Have we got anyone we can bring on for him? Okay, we bring him on. I've never played him before. I'm not sure if this is going to be his debut. Jose Maria... Palau, he's been with us as part of our youth setup. He has actually played a game in the Premier League as a substitute, so it's not his debut. But he's a 20 year old Spanish under 21 with three and a half star potential. And like I say, he's one of the homegrown players we have, so we've taken both wing backs off. And let's see what Palau can do. Can he Palau something off? That didn't make sense. That, that weren't a good one. Right, we're approaching 75 minutes. We're going to make another couple of substitutions. And I think for this, we'll bring on Alistair Bruce and come on for Shaquille Van Persie. Gustavo Gonzalez can come on for Thiago Silva. And I won't tempt fate by making another substitution just yet. I'll wait a few more minutes. But yeah, this has been... A glorious game. It's been a stunning performance from us. They've got a corner and they've headed it in. I hate it when that happens because 5-0 sounds better than 5-1 or 5-2. Right, let's make our final substitute. I think we're going to bring Bakayo Saka off. And we bring on Singanu, mate. Actually, no, we're on Christopher Calderon. Giving some of our younger players a chance to just get a bit of a kick about of the ball. They've managed to keep the ball so out there. It's going to be 5-2, you know, because FM loves a 5-2 scoreline. There you go. Right, if we can just, like, stop conceding now, because it frustrates me, this. We should have won 5-0, but FM does like a 5-2, like I say. It affects their goal difference, which isn't great, but a win is a win, and we'll take it all day, every day. And if we have a look at the table, we are top of our Champions League table, league 
group phase thing that we have. And let's have a look at who we still have to come in the Champions League. Because I don't think I've actually shown you our fixtures for it. So next up is by Leverkusen away from home. Then we have PSG away from home. I mean, it's like three away games in a row in the Champions League. Then we make it four, because then we've got Lazio away from home. And then we finish with games against Derry and AS Monaco. So them two games there, you'd absolutely think that's going to be six points. And, you know, obviously we're going to get tested. PSG is obviously the standout tough game there. But let's not kid ourselves. By Leverkusen and Lazio will not be easy either. Lazio, I'll say that, Lazio are 30th. By Leverkusen 16th. So I think the next time we'll come back, which will be Monday's episode, we'll probably do, I mean, this sounds quite appealing. PSG away from home and then we go to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for a North London derby because the Tottenham team is currently in third place. So that's probably where we'll come back next. I mean, if we've still won every single game to that point, A, I'll be amazed, but it would also be very nice. So thank you very much for watching, folks. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, have an amazing weekend, and I'll see you for Bottoms Up, 6 p.m. Monday. But don't forget, there's also the Avely Road to Glory um, Let's Play series that you can see that will be out on Sunday at 2 p.m. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.